Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 9, DOM and events. In this video, we'll be learning about DOM. We'll mostly focus on how to use the events system to make our pages more reactive. This will be a shorter video, as while this is an important topic, it can be boring and is small compared to other topics. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what is DOM? DOM stands for Domain Object Model and is the system your web browser uses to represent the HTML web page as objects. We have actually been using it already for modifying elements in our web page. With our usual document element inner HTML, we are accessing the inner HTML property of the object representing the element with the ID. Just like normal objects, we access properties with dot notation. W3Schools provides a nice image that helps you get your head around how the DOM is structured. Each web page starts with a document object. From there, we have the HTML tag as the root node in the document. From here, the nodes build out in a structure and belong to either the root node or to another tag. We can see here in the body object that it has a link and a heading node. The heading has a child text node. This text node is very important and acts as the container to hold the text. Generally, you won't have to worry about this unless you're building a pretty complex page manipulation system. Okay, so what can we do with DOM? DOM gives us the power to add, move, or even delete HTML elements. We can also modify styles that are affecting elements. So if we wanted to, we could build the whole web page with JavaScript. There are several reasons why we wouldn't dynamically create the whole page, time being a big factor, and also support for search engines. DOM also allows us to trigger code when events happen. We've actually already used the onClick event to run code in earlier videos. To access properties of a HTML element, we use the dot notation, because under the hood, these elements are objects like we learned in the last video. So to modify the style of an element, we access the style property that belongs to a HTML element, and then the CSS property name. I'll put a link in the description to all of the CSS properties you can modify. To dynamically create a new element, it takes a little more work. The document object has some utility functions that allow us to create new elements and nodes in the document. First, we need to create the element. In the first line of this example, we create a P element for the paragraph. But we are not done yet, we can't put text in it yet. Next we need to create a text node to hold the text inside the element. Again we use a utility function from the document object. Now that we have created the text node, we can add it onto our paragraph by using the append child function. Every element has an append child function, so you can think of it as placing an element between the start and end tags of that element. Ok, before we get into our example, let's cover DOM events. Events trigger when certain criteria are met. We have used this for mouse clicks, but there are other events such as on load, mouse over, key presses, etc. You can set these events to run a function that you've created. So in the example here, we have a button which we have set its on click event to run the function, my function. This should look familiar. Here are a few commonly used events. You have most likely encountered most of these online. On change and on submit are quite useful for checking forms before they're submitted, to see if somebody has accidentally missed a field. I'll put a link in the description to a list of all possible events. Ok, finally let's jump into an example. We'll create a custom button that can change how it looks based on certain event triggers, such as a mouse over or a mouse click. Let's call it button events.html. Alright, so I'm going to just grab some and use it as a template, and file save as. And I'm going to set it to the button events. Alright, so I'm going to be creating a function, so I'm just going to get rid of the body section of that function and also the body of the HTML document. And I'm going to rename my function to set color. And I'm going to reuse this function. So I'm going to pass in an element. So this is going to be the element that I want to set the color of. And I'm also going to pass in the color, so the color that I want to set that element. Alright, so I'm going to access the DOM properties of this element. So element dot style, so I'm going to access the style. And then the style property that I want to access is background color with a capital C. And I'm going to set that to equal the color that I pass in. Alright, so that's our function written that's, that we're going to use for all of our events. 
So now I'm going to create a div that has uh, no special uh, styling or anything on it yet. And this div is going to be our new button. So on mouse over, it's going to equal open quotes and we're going to set color. So we're going to call our set color function and we're going to pass in this. So this div element we're going to pass in comma and then a color to set it. So I might just do a hash D10011. That's a simple enough color. And then we'll close off our brackets and we'll close off our quotes. All right, let's add another event. So I'm going to go down to the next line so it's nice and easy for you to see. And I'm going to call this one on click. So it's going to be the on click event. So when somebody clicks the div, we're going to set color again and we're going to pass in this comma and what color shall I set it? Let's set it to a, I don't know, a very bright color. So we'll do FF, uh, BBFF. All right. So I'll close that off and close off that event. All right. And I'll add another one. So on, um, Let's do this one as on mouse leave. So on mouse leave. All right. So when the mouse leaves the divs area, we're going to set color again. I'm going to pass in this. And what color should we set it this time? Let's do. Let's do another very like neutral color. So we'll just do hash uh, a three b three, and let's do f three. Let's let's make it a bluey kind of color. All right, so we'll close off our quotes on that one. So that's each of our events set. Now let's set the style of the button so that we can actually see it and it's not invisible. So style equals, and we'll set the background color style. So in CSS, the background color is the um, the cut background color of this element. So let's set this to say a very gray color. So F zero, F zero, F zero. All right. And semicolon, and we're going to set a width. So the width is going to be say 80 pixels and we'll do a height and we'll make that say 20 pixels and semicolon. And then we'll have some padding. So the padding and I'll set that to 20 pixels as well. So the button should be easy enough to see. Then I'll close off these quotes and close off the div. All right, so inside the div, I'm going to just have the words a button, exclamation mark, and then I'm gonna close off my div. All right, so we've created a div that has three events. So on the mouse over, it'll set the color. Uh, on mouse click, it'll set the color. And on mouse leave, it'll set the color. Each time calling this set color and passing in itself as the element. All right, so let's save this and let's give it a shot. So I'll drag it into my web browser and we get this button. So it might be a little bit hard to see. I'll just zoom in. And as we move in, it sets the color to red. As we move out, it goes to a bluey kind of color. And if we click, it goes to a pinky kind of color. Awesome. And if you wanted to run code, if something uh, clicked on it, you could also add that into our on click. Awesome. Just like you can with other element properties, you can set the events function by directly assigning it to the object's event. In the example here, we set the buttons on click to our do something function. This concludes our look at DOM and events in JavaScript. Next, we'll be looking at using built-in tools for working with dates, math, and formatting things. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.